Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to look at how to animate Illustrator art in Adobe After Effects. All right, thanks to John Jay for this request. He asked how I did the eye animation for my source text uh, tutorial in After Effects. I'll show you that here. All right. So creating that art where you, you could actually do that with the pen tool in After Effects, but if you're a big fan of Illustrator like me and the precision that you have in working in Illustrator, I would never draw something like that in After Effects. In fact, I didn't. I just did the whole thing in Illustrator and brought that in. I'm working with layers. I'm bringing in a comp. This takes two seconds. You wouldn't believe how easy this is. Check it out. So let's look at the Illustrator artwork first. I'm using the um, selection tool and just showing you that I have a bunch of uh, pieces of artwork here and they're all separate hunks. And I've got one thing on a top layer that, that will also be used to close the eye. So this is a shape and I'm just going to animate that. I'm, I'm going to move that shape down over top. And when you see that, So if it's the exact same color, when you move it, it looks like the eye is closing. Pretty simple. That's the effect I want. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is that I'm going to show my transparency grid to show that I've got nothing in the background. By default, when you create a new document inside Illustrator, it's transparent. It shows up as white because most people are working in a print environment in Illustrator, but there is nothing there behind it. So that's a good thing and also a bad thing because the center of the eye needs to have a white backup. And you can see that right here. There's white right there. There's white right there. And if I remove it, that would be transparent and that wouldn't work with the eye animation. The same with this in the eye here. They're all separate pieces. Now, it didn't have to be cut out around the pupil. The actual white of the eye could be another large shape and the white could be a shape on top. It's just, I, I'm an efficiency illustrator guy, so I cut everything out uh, that way. So, you don't have to turn on the transparency grid. The transparency grid is just there to indicate to you, to remind yourself of what will not be there. Okay. All right, let's jump into After Effects and import the Illustrator artwork. File, import, file. You can also double click in this area down in here and it will open up a dialog box. So I'm gonna click in that eye, import it, and it recognizes this um, and asks if I want to bring it in as footage or a composition. I'm going to bring it in as composition as layer size. If I choose document size, some, think of something as small as the, the, the pupil would be the size of the full document. I don't want that. I want the size to be based on the layer. So composition, layer size, okay. On the left hand side, there's the comp, double click on it, open it up. And this is equivalent to the little transparency grid in Illustrator. It uh, turns that on. Okay, so now we have all of the pieces, but if we click on them, you'll notice that we can't animate the actual paths. If I select both of these and go to the layer menu, you have the ability to create shapes from vector layers. When I click on that, After Effects conveniently turns off both the of the visibility of both Illustrator files and converts them immediately to outlines. So I don't even need these Illustrator files anymore. Click on them and delete them. If you don't see this feature in um, After Effects, you probably have a really old version of After Effects. It was added a little bit later. Now, here's the eyeball. I'm gonna open up and I'll turn off what I'm using, going to be called the, the close or the lid. And you'll see when I twirl this down, there's contents. When I twirl that down, there's a bunch of groups. And each one of these is one of those objects. Oh, it's a group of objects, pretty cool. So I'm going to recolor these just so we can see the, the closing of the eye. And the easiest way to do that is you can select it down in the bottom and click on this fill swatch right here. And you can pick any color you want. I'm gonna click on my eyedropper and I'm gonna grab this blue color over in my color themes, click okay. I need to do it for the eyebrow too. 
which is right there. Same thing, click on the fill, get my eyedropper. I could either click right in the artwork or over on the right hand side uh, to change that. Now when I turn back the closing lid at the top, um, we can see this a little bit easier. And I'm also going to lock the bottom layer so I don't accidentally um, move it around. I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in. And the if I hold the space bar down, I can pan this around. Now here's the hardest part about working with any vector paths inside After Effects. If you come from Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and that kind of style of selecting paths, uh, After Effects will be a, a little bit confusing for you. There's a lot of double clicking and clicking outside until you finally get the right thing. So you'll notice that when I just select it, we get a large point here, and that point is actually the whole outside of this. So if we try to animate that, it's going to do that. We would need to get deeper inside here. So if I double click on this, you see how that one has become uh, selected. And when I click on this, now I'm moving that one. And that will be the effect that we want that goes down like that, okay? So I need to twirl this down, twirl down the contents, twirl down the group, twirl down the path to finally get to the path uh, stopwatch, which will add a keyframe. Click on here. There's my first keyframe here. Move this down. Make sure that I'm selecting again that one and drag that down. I could hold the shift key down and it will constrain it vertically. And there's my animation. Pretty easy. And I will select the group and change the color so it's the same color. And when you do that, it basically just disappears in like that. A little bit too slow, drag the keyframe earlier. A little bit too slow, drag it earlier. Give it a more organic feel. Click on the uh, path and it will select the path name. It selects all the keyframes. F9 will easy ease this in so it's a little bit more organic. And if you want to really add some realism to this, then select it, turn on motion blur and turn on motion blur. And depending on how fast that eye is closing, the faster it closes. See that nice little bit of motion blur? Nice little bit of motion blur on that. A bit of realism in there. And if you wanted to, you could select those keyframes. So I'll select the first one, copy it, paste it. Now I've got a blink. And if I select all of them, copy them, then drop them in arbitrary places, and I've got an incredible blinking eye. just like that. So there you go, John. Pretty easy. I mean, if I didn't have to stop and explain this, import, convert it to uh, After Effects artwork, click on that path, add a keyframe, drop it in, add a little bit more motion graphic uh, finesse to this with easy ease and motion blur. Boom, you've got this in. This is a vector object. I could stick a face in behind it and have this kind of a vector eye on top of a face. Uh, I digress. You could do a lot of things. But the connection between Adobe Illustrator and Adobe After Effects is gorgeous. Uh, graphics and motion animators know this so that if you're given a beautiful vector logo, man, you can go crazy with it because you can do anything and now with the Cinema 4D capability inside uh, After Effects to do the extrusions, you could bring the logo in, extrude that logo, keep it in Cinema 4D rendering and animate it directly inside here. Absolutely awesome, crazy stuff. I love the way that Adobe is taking this stuff and making it work together. 
All right. If you found this informative and if you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us a little bit further, join us over on Patreon for as little as one little dollar a month. We've got wonderful su uh, uh, supporters over on Patreon. And I thank you so much for all of your wonderful support. And thanks to all the comments and keep me on my toes. Make sure you, you, you've got, if you've got something you want to, uh, uh, me to do a tutorial on, let me know. Like uh, John uh, asking for this, uh, some of my most popular tutorials work uh, from people's requests. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking